What's up YouTube, Seth Sanchez here, and today we're going to do a product review on the Think Tank Hydrophobia for the 70-200 to 200 size. Now in my previous video I did a discussion on color runs and whether or not it's safe to uh, cover those or not. And if you're going to do them you should be definitely protecting your gear, and I mentioned the Think Tank Hydrophobia in that video. So I figured why not just make a video doing a product review on the Think Tank Hydrophobia. So let's just get right into it. So first we'll just go over the whole exterior of the product itself and see what you get exactly in this whole little deal. So for starters you've got a little uh, camera strap on the top and I've had no complaints about it. it. does what it's supposed to do, works great. And going on to the top section near the lens hood you've got this little pouch that goes over the front part where your lens is sticking out. You can put it over the top like that if you're not going to be using it and it has a little piece right here that you can just tighten with, no problems there, folds right back up, slides right back in. Uh, moving on, you've got your little eyepiece holder right here. Now that's the another important thing about this product and it's definitely a, a con in my opinion. You have to buy a separate eyepiece for uh, this product to use it properly because a normal eyepiece that comes with the cameras uh, just doesn't fit through that and it just it's just doesn't work uh, and I think it's like twenty dollars if I'm not mistaken it's uh, think tank EP-20 that's the name of the product but you you do need this and it is a shame that you have to buy it separately I don't know why it doesn't come with it and they don't mention it really in the product description on like any website so that's a bit annoying but definitely pick up one of these if you're going to get one of the think tank hydrophobias um, next in the front part You've got, this is where the lens is obviously going to be sticking out of, and you have a Velcro that can just wrap around the hood and tighten it as tight as you need it to be. Um, I'll go over another con is uh, with this section here, it's really annoying because no matter how tight, it seems as though no matter how tight you make it, it, it can just, it slowly eventually will start to like work its way down or up over the hood. But it's, it's, it's kind of rare, but it, it does happen, and it's a bit annoying when it does happen. The way you want to get around that, like I mentioned in my previous video, is to uh, use gaffer tape around the hood. You want to just gaffer tape all right here, just all around, and stick it on there as good as you can. And when I do that, I've had no problems. So that's an easy fix to that, but that is definitely a con about the product. Uh, next, you've got the rear part, where you've got your back of your camera is going to be right here. You have this little thingy jig that can just flip and Velcro on the back right here so that your viewfinder is not exposed to anything if you aren't using it. But honestly, most of the time I just leave it like that and I've, I've had no problems. Because uh, I just find it kind of annoying to have to constantly you know, flip back and forth when you're, you are using it and you're not using it. So I just leave it like that and it sticks right up top here so it's not going to be flapping around so you won't have any problems with that. Now, going to the back of this part, it is very annoying to shoot when you have this on your camera because when you're out shooting in the day or even, I mean, just in general, whether it's day or night, you're going to have this problem. It's, it's a little bit difficult to see the back of your screen. And I know you've probably read reviews about this product already, but, and you, you probably noticed that there's a lot of people complaining about the back part because it's just, and then also a chunk of the screen, at least, this is on the 1DX at least. I know every camera body is different and has a, a screen maybe placed lower and opposed to this might be up a little bit higher but for the 1DX and I'm pretty sure for most camera bodies especially all pro ones it gets a piece of the little bit of the top of the LCD screen gets cut off from this black part right here where the viewfinder goes and that's a bit annoying it's not definitely it's not a deal breaker in my opinion and I think what's more concerning is that the fact that with all, especially during daytime, you have so much sun and, re and reflection coming off of this back part here. It's really difficult to see your images and to review images. Can be a pain in the ass, honestly. But just recently, I covered a Tough Mudder, and my uh, good friend Mike showed me a product. I uh, forget what they're called. Just totally went blank. Uh, I believe it's called a Loop. I, I forget. I'll put a annotation in the video when I look it up afterwards, but it's, it's one of those things that just magnifies. Uh, you put it up against your viewfinder and you look through the little uh, 
viewfinder part and it's it's not you you put it on the back of the screen and you look through the viewfinder of it and it magnifies it you can just see and it's it gets rid of you know the reflections in the sun it had been an issue and honestly when i used it with this and i put it up against this part i could see it clear as day and it definitely gets rid of that problem so if you are going to be getting one of these and you're concerned about the back from not being able to see your images is an issue definitely pick up one of those products i'll like i said i'll put it in the annotations in the video and then i'll also put a link to that product i believe it's around 80 dollars for a good one that definitely takes it takes care of that whole entire issue uh, moving on, you've got two slots for both your arms, left arm and your right arm, so you can get in there and zoom in and out and hold on to the side of your camera and take pictures. Uh, and then it has little tighteners right here so that when you have your arms in, you can tighten it. Nothing can get in there. Honestly, though, I've, I have shot with both of these wide open with my arms in it because it's kind of a pain to, like, you know, pull, tighten one and then your, your arm is stuck in there. So how are you going to tighten the other one? It's, it's a bit of a pain, but I have shot with these open just like this. I did the color run like that, and I've had I had no problems. Like I said in the previous video, nothing got in there. Uh, the product itself, for, for the job it's intended to do, as far as protecting your camera gear, it definitely performs excellent in that in terms of that. It has not disappointed me one bit. Here's a the, one of my cameras. I shot the color run with it, and as you can see, it's beautiful. I did not clean it at all. I did not wipe it. None of that stuff, it, it, it wasn't even necessary. I, honest to God, did not clean this after the color run. Completely fine, completely unharmed, and I'm very happy in terms of what the product is supposed to do. So if you're really looking in to get one of these things, I would highly recommend it, if, whether it's because of snow, rain, color runs, mud, whatever it may be, this will do the job, and it will be the best at doing that job. Overall performance, like I said, is just excellent, but the only cons that I have is, which can both be fixed very easily, is, like I said, the lens hood section when you want to tighten it with the Velcro. It, it, it gets on there pretty good, don't get me wrong, but when you try, you know, running around and it's, you know, on the side of your hip, you know, wiggling back and forth, it's eventually going to slowly work its way back, 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 or forward, and then get in the way of your images, which is quite annoying. And honestly, you can fix that easily with the gaffer tape. Uh, that so that shouldn't be a problem as long as you have gaffer tape and if you don't I mean just pick some up it's not expensive at all and the other con would be just the rear part where you're trying to view images but like I said if you pick up that product that I will put in the description you will not have any issues I, I was so happy when he showed me that I was like this it, it's it's a huge game changer uh, so let's just go test it in the shower and see how it performs with uh, the shower going on and I'll be shooting to have it on me. So let's check that out now. Alright guys, we're good to go so let's see how it performs. Okay, I think I did enough. So let's see how it did. Okay, so let's check it out. Let's take it out and see if it did its job. And as you guys saw, it got completely drenched and I tried not to hold back on it. So let's just hope that it came out good. Okay. to undo this little viewfinder part here. There we go. Wow. Yeah, it only got a little bit wet. Barely. Let me see if you guys can see that better. Hold on. Yeah, let me move this out of the way. Here's a here it is. Is that in focus? Yeah, it's kind of hard to see, but yeah, it only got wet on the viewfinder, 
the hood obviously got wet because like I said there's the opening a little bit so like right here it got wet on the lens hood it's kind of hard to see sorry guys I'm trying my best but yeah just just the hood got wet right here bottom of the camera's fine sides fine back by the viewfinder got a little bit wet in there but that's obviously because that's exposed and I got under the water obviously so that's it's wow yeah, completely dry. So, same thing's gonna happen obviously with snow, mud, color run, whatever you're doing, should not have any problems. And I am very impressed, and I hope you guys are too. I hope this cleared up a lot of things for you guys if you had any confusion on whether or not this was the right product, if it's worth the investment. So, hopefully that cleared that up for you guys. Okay guys, so as a bonus for this video, I'm going to show you how to install your camera inside the Think Tank Hydrophobia, so let's just jump right into it. Okay, so having it upright like this, to turn to your side where your left arm would go in. You have a little zipper right here. You're just going to unzip it. And as you can see on the inside here, right under where your uh, straps, your, uh, your shoulder strap is, you have a little section here that just it's like a little clipper and what you're going to put here is you're going to put this around the back part of where your lens is right here so let's just do that right now you're just going to open it up slide your camera in I'm stuck to the bed sorry guys it's like super hard because I'm like watching the camera and making sure that it's on video so you guys can see it. So if any given moment it's not, I'm sorry. It's very difficult. Okay. And also make sure that your uh, viewfinder is off and your new one that you bought separate is with you. Well, actually, it's actually smarter to just put it on right now. So let's just do that. Clips on. Pull that over. I guess the first thing you want to do is make sure that you put this part through this little hole. You just have to stretch it. It won't rip. Don't worry. It's made to stretch. Okay. Make sure it's all positioned right. It's all good. Go back in here. Flip it upside down. Do whatever you got to do. But you want to wrap that clipper around your lens, like I said. So you have to just search for those each side of that. And let's see if I can show you guys this better. There it is. So you're just going to put this little rubber part around the base like this and then fold it. Hope you guys can see this. And it's just going to clip. You can tighten it if needed over here. That's good to go. And then now you are just going to zip it up. Position it as needed. There you go. Should be all right. And then you're gonna move up to the front now. Let's try this. This is difficult. Hold on one second, guys. There you go. So yeah, now you're just going to let's make sure it's in focus. There we go. I'm just gonna take this part right here, pull it through. It's really self-explanatory, honestly, but. Just in case some people are confused, because I know when I first looked at it, I was a bit confused with getting it fully installed correctly, but you're going to pull this through like that, as tight as you can, and then you're just going to pull it over the Velcro, make sure it's on there good, and voila, there you go. I don't know if that's in focus or not, let me see. It's probably better, like, there you go, you just see it. And it's on there. Like I said, like it, it does a good job, but over time it can move its way back a little bit or forward and get in the way. Like you'll see like some black in your images if it moves forward. But to take care of that, like I said, you literally let me just grab some velcro really quick. I'm not velcro, gaffer tape. Just take some gaffer tape. Just a little bit. It's like that. And rip it off about that that length, and then you just take it like so. Put it on one end of it, and then wrap it around the lens hood, like that. 
and make sure it's on there really good. And you literally do this all the way around. And it, yeah, it is a bit of a ways for gaffer tape. It is annoying, but I mean, if you want to be really safe and you want to make sure it ain't going anywhere for a mud run or color run just to be fully safe, do this and you won't have any problems. And that's how you install your camera body inside the Think Tank Hydrophobia. Thanks for watching, guys. As always, like, comment, subscribe, and I will catch you guys next time.